Here's an update on my Remington 572 crow black wing on uh, refinishing it. And I'm actually getting it done pretty fast because uh, I've been feeling pretty good. So it's rare, but I come across these days and uh, take advantage of it, right? All right, as you can see, it is in parts. I have all the other miscellaneous parts on my dresser. I'm pretty excited because this came in the mail today. This is just the, uh, the trigger guard assembly without any parts. So as you can see, it's just one piece. It's molded aluminum alloy and um, it's in really good shape. So as you can see this part here, this is the part that was wearing down on my other one and I'll show you. Because, uh, you know, you can't change this. Again, this is one piece molded. Um, and I'll show you the part, which is this. So this is the same way as it goes on. So if you look right there, see the top of that where my thumb is? That's where it was wearing. So as you can see, it's kind of like on an angle there. And it's supposed to be completely flat. All the way to here. See how flat this part is? The little extension. I guess they call it an extension shelf. Well, let me compare this one, which is used, but see how flat that is right there? There's your extension shelf, and it's completely flat and straight. Okay. So, what I'm going to do is take this one. But before I put everything together, I'm going to spray paint it. Spray paint it the heated black, the high temperature black. Lightly uh, steel wool at first, and then give it a couple coats of that, of the black, high temp. And then I'll take all these parts off. I don't think it's too bad. I think uh, everything should be fine. And... Uh, put all the parts back on there so the only difference I see in this trigger guard is one just slightly different well as you can see the original doesn't have any holes here where my thumb is okay it's solid all the way through well if I pick this one up you could see a hole there see that that's the only difference and I'm sure this is because it's a newer trigger guard but I'm sure it will work, but since it's the older uh, Remington 572, the lightweight model, um, they didn't have the hole. As you can see, there's no hole there, see? Well, I guess one good thing about it is it will even make it a little bit more lightweight, right? Since uh, that's drilled out for a hole. I don't know what that is, but... All right, but everything else is the same, so everything should work. So I'll get this done, painted a couple black coats, put all the parts on, and I'll show you the update what I did so far. I got all the barrel ready. That's pretty well cleaned up. I just got a couple touch-ups right there. Everything's taken out and cleaned. I did all that inside. The injector this time, I got all that clean. I took the injector out. It just kind of pops out right there. You take a little skin, thin screwdriver and just pop it out. So everything's thoroughly clean. Barrel's clean. That looks good. Uh, I did get some really good two-part epoxy bond. And as you could see, I just did that about an hour ago. And I, because the, the uh, lug nut for the uh, magazine tube here is completely stripped. So I'm going to try the two-part epoxy bond, see if that works. Hopefully it does. I'll cross my fingers. I think I did a good job, and I just taped it. You know, I'm going to leave it over overnight to get it really hard and see how that comes out and see if it stays on there. The only thing is, if it won't come off, like it's going to be really on there, which I'll be happy if it does, you would never be able to take this off unless you kind of break it off because of the epoxy bond material. But we'll see if it's as good as it says. And then the receiver came out nice. 
See, I've got the receiver all painted. That's just oil on there. I might just take a, as you can see, there's a little bit of waviness to it, but not bad. Actually came out decent. I'm happy with it. It actually looks better in person. And, um, okay. it looks really good. I might just take some really, like, triple four or four whole, um, zero steel wool and then just kind of go over it lightly. But I cleaned it all up inside, oiled it a little bit. Everything looks good. I think it came out sweet. So there's the receiver. Now the only thing about the receiver part is you could barely see the model number 572. See the, the Remington Fieldmaster? Even that is not as deep markings than it was before. And that's because I put three coats of black on. And so the paint just kind of brings it up a little bit in, in height wise. And it doesn't bring the markings out as much as it did, but it's still pretty good. There you go, you can see it better. The only ones that are not is this model 572. But this was already worn before this model 572. Because again, this is aluminum cast alloy. And the aluminum alloy um, wears, especially when you keep holding it. I mean, it's going to wear in time. And this firearm was shot quite a few times. So the aluminum is going to wear. That's one of the things where I said it's not good to make parts out of aluminum. Because you could see how this worn here, you know, this shelf here uh, through the years. But like I said, it, it still works. This part does work. But now I think it's going to work a lot better now. You know, that's the way it came from the factory. I didn't get the stock done, but I did get the forearm done. Here's how the forearm turned out. See that? I didn't do it perfect. I don't like anything perfect. But it came out nice. Came out a hell of a lot better than what it did. Or what it was. It's got a really, really fine crack right there. But it's solid. So I didn't do anything with that crack. I just left it as it is. But it's not, you can't pull it apart or anything. But I think, I think it came out nice, you know? It's a little, little darker than I thought. I think if it was a little bit more gold honey, I, I would have liked it a lot better, but I'm happy with it. Like I said, it came out pretty nice. I, I uh, took some varnish remover, got it all off, sanded it a little bit, and then put like three or four light coats of uh, clear coat on it. So, so this is what I have to do left. I got to do this, the stock. And as you can see, it's pretty close in color. This is, of course, is a little bit more gold in color. That's the way they came. So when I do this, it's going to be more like this, I'm sure. I don't want it to be different or anything, so. Um, but I'm going to have to take off all the varnish off of this. This is probably about an hour, two hours work. And then lightly sand it and get it to where I want it. I'll just do little by little. And then once that's done, this is done, everything. Like I said, all I got to do is put this together, paint this, put it all together, and everything will be done. And then I'll make another video of it when it's all complete. But as you can see, I'm getting there. Again, I'm taking advantage of the way I feel to get this thing done. So, okay. I'll get the video up soon. So you can see the finished product. Because as you see, once this is on here, you know, it's going to look sweet. It's going to look really nice when it's done. And then maybe what I'll do is uh, I'll put the, uh, I'll put this maybe on Gun Broker and see what I could get for it. Even though it's, you know, not going to be original to what it was. But if you remember the first video, there was a lot of wear on the receiver. The forearm didn't really look that well. And of course, you could see the stock, how it looks right now until that's done. So, but we'll see where it's go because this is a rare one. And uh, it'll be like a new gun, a new 22 rifle. All right. And that's the Remington 572 uh, Crow Wing Black. And... Uh, 
Talk to you soon. Have a great day. Bye.